Hello folks, Brian Manzella coming to you today again from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, home of the LSU Tigers. And uh, this is episode four of the Brian Manzella Golf Show on YouTube.com and also my website, brianmanzella.com. That's B-R-I-A-N-M-A-N-Z-E-L-L-A.com. And today I'm going to answer some questions that uh, people have asked in the Manzella Answer Department of my web forum. The Manzella Golf Forum has been around for a while, since 2003. I started, because to be honest with you, I didn't think anybody else did a very good job of it. And I still think I have the best forum, because we answer questions basically to help you. We don't answer questions to get you to necessarily buy a video or necessarily come to see us for golf lessons or promote a certain, you know, agenda that we have to take over golf or something like that. We, we want to help you. And we feel like if we do a good job helping you, then if we got any other products or services that, you know, we can assist you in, with your golf game that you, you might visit with us. Um, I have a great staff. Uh, Tom Bartlett, Michael Finney, um, a lot of their swings on my website, do a search. Guys can really hit it. I've been teaching them both for a long, long time. They're my two best friends in the whole world. They're great teachers in their own right. Michael's up in Louisville, Kentucky. Tom Bartlett's still over here in New Orleans. And uh, guys like uh, other staff instructors like Damon Lucas, a great teacher in Baltimore. Jim Kobolinski in Chicago, Illinois, <laughs> one of my favorite towns. And Ryan Smither, who's Michael's assistant, and also mine up in Louisville, Kentucky. We can answer your questions. And today, we're going to answer some questions that some members that have been on for a long time just have certain questions and some of the new people you register for the forum all you need is your email address we give you a password you, you belong you can get access to 50,000 posts and videos and all kind of good stuff you might get one of your questions at, answered right here on YouTube in one of the other episodes a gentleman has a question his name is Joe he says Brian how do I get my right shoulder down plane I'd like to look like the Manzella logo he means my whole logo and uh, he also, also wants to know if it's okay to start his swing with the right shoulder. So he really wants to know what the right shoulder does in the swing. And uh, he liked to look like uh, that logo, which was Lee Trevino. We still use it as a little icon on my, uh, on, on my forearm. Uh, most people don't have any idea what that means, right shoulder on plane. What the heck is that? Well, when you play golf, if you're a really good player, this is what not, does not happen. You do not just stand here and pivot around your spine. I see that all the time, and I've done answers in the past, and you search them on the web, you might find them on my website or someplace else, and I, I just think that's silly. You know, I mean, you can just see plainly in, if you have TiVo or you watch uh, CBS and see Swing Vision, or, I mean, nobody's shoulders like this at Impact. Everybody's right shoulders down here. Their shoulders are on a tilted angle. And the reason for that is you want the force coming from your body to go in the direction of the ball because that's what you're trying to hit. Uh, I'm not a baseball player, but I've played football my whole life. I can throw a football pretty good. I guarantee you if I throw this ball like a football, what happens is, is that my right shoulder goes in the same direction my arm goes in. If I'm going to throw a ball side arm right here, I'm going to throw a ball side on, my shoulder is going to go in that direction. So when you're playing golf, your hands are up here at the top of the swing. They need to, they need to go mostly toward the ball. They may drop a little bit to a flatter plane, but they mostly got to go toward the ball. That right shoulder needs to go toward the ball, too, to, for, for support. Now, I guarantee you, here in the driving range, you look at these people at the driving range, and they don't really look like that, right? They, they kind of have this, this kind of look right here. It's what you see, you know, in golf. Well, why, why? Because they have the club face really open, and if they, I'll have the club face open, I'll just grip it wide open, and I'll try to make an otherwise pretty good swing. I mean, that ball went off at right angles. Once I saw that a couple times, I would start, you know, some people call it coming over the top, but you can do it without the club coming outside, and just square the club up by having this really high right shoulder and right arm. Well. You're not the person that getting your right shoulder on plane is really going to help. But we hope one day you fix the club face and this information will help you. Now, how are you going to fix the club face? Well, <laughs> Never Slice again, my new video, uh, second version, 2.0, just coming out. 
in the next couple of days. The web version's available right now on the site. And we deal with all the things that people do who slice it. And believe me, people who slice it, they slice it because the face is too old. And, uh, but you may be one of those people who don't slice it and you right shoulder written on plane. And we're going to assume you fixed your club face. How do you get your right shoulder to go from the top of the swing toward the ball and not from the top of the swing toward the camera, let's say? Well, a couple ways to do it, but the, the main thing is you've got to tilt your axis. Um, here's my axis. I'm bent over. I might be bent a little to the right because my right hand's lower than my left hand on the club. I don't just swing and keep that the same. You, know, you read some magazine articles, some teachers that have been teaching for as long as I've been alive, and they still say stuff like that. It just drives me totally crazy because every good player in the history of golf's tailbone was closer to the target at impact than it was at address. Every. 100%. Things that are 100%, they don't come along every day. You better write those down and make sure you do them. But anyway, uh, to get that right shoulder to go down plane, you're going to have to have some hip slide. Now, your hips are going to have to unwind, too. Now, I can just hear some of y'all saying, Whoa, baloney! Ben Hogan, he says, from the top of the swing, turn your hips. Turn. Ben Hogan hit the biggest hook in the history of the PGA Tour when he first got out there. And you know what hookers do? They do the opposite. Instead of doing this, where the hips go backwards and the right shoulder's high, they get that hip way forward, get that right shoulder really low, just trying to start the ball to the right, see? Hogan, you know, once he had all this built up, and now he's fixed his club face and had it less closed, now he had to feel like he just got out of dodge right here and unwound right away. If you're a hooker, that might be what you need to think about. But most people have high right shoulders, and we're going to talk about that. So, from the top of the swing, if you could just think about making your hands go toward the ball. My hands are going toward the ball. Now my hands are going toward my left foot. Now my hands are going toward the camera. Okay? So if my hands go toward the ball, they may be smart enough. They may be what we call in the golfing machine, educated enough to tell your right shoulder, hey, right shoulder, when I threw that ball, I never think about my right shoulder. I've been throwing that football man since I was this big. So same thing in golf. That's where you start. Start with the getting your hands to go toward the ball. If that doesn't work for you, you gotta train that shoulder to do what it needs to do. So then you can just think about your hands, which in the long run <laughs> is what you want to do. So you got a couple of little drills. One, you set up and you make up as flat a shoulder turn as you can. Get that right shoulder turn as flat as you can without moving your head a mile this way or this way. Just basically turning around some point right here in your chest or the base of your neck, somewhere in there, and now you're in a good pivot position at the top of the swing. You can hold the shaft. I'm holding the shaft. I'll do it from another angle. I'll show you where your right shoulder is you're right underneath the shaft, and that shaft is pointing right at the ball. I get a little right arm, look like a golfer right here. Now I want that right shoulder to move toward the ball. And all you got to do is the first little part of it, get that shoulder moved down plane. You can see how when I do it, my hips go forward. That's the way to do it. You just, <laughs> and maybe you still got funny hips, so you got to tell your hips, hey hips, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Now watch what I'm doing right here. I got a club over my right thigh, behind my left thigh. I got my hand on the club face, just holding it back. Now I make a left arm only swing, and my left arm, my left hand is on the camera side of this hand, and I'm gonna try to start my downswing without. You know, uh, you know, wholesale, just unwinding my hips without sliding. They're unwinding a little bit because my hand's certainly moving toward the camera, but I'm sliding as much as I'm turning, and my hands stay in front of my hips, and once I get into this position, I can just go. So, but that might be enough, not, not be enough either. So one of the things I like to do when I'm working on something is I like to hit shots really, really easy. Uh, I think that if you can't make a swing really easy, you don't know how to make it full. That ball went about 100 yards, 6 on. It's going pretty easy. My normal 6 on distance might be more like 170. But what, what that did was, I got to see, I was actually working on this today a little bit myself because I haven't hit a lot of balls. One of the first things you lose, whether you don't practice too much, you take a little time off, winter time, it's cold in lots of parts of the country right now, or you just get a little older. 
First thing Hogan and those guys left for it lost. They, they looked like that one day, and then all of a sudden, you know, Byron Nelson, poor Byron Nelson, the last shot he ever hit in the Masters, you know, was like this, because you lose the elasticity in that left side of your body. But that little slow swing I made on that shot, that told me a lot. That told me, well, I did that better than I do when I do it full speed. Now, maybe a lot of reasons for that. I'm not the most flexible guy in the world. Maybe you aren't either, little girl. But to me, what that means is if I'm not doing that quite as good, if I'm not getting into that tilt, and getting into the tilt is easy. Almost anybody can do that. Once you get into the tilt, you've got to be able to release your accumulators. You don't release the club. Like my teacher Ben Doyle says, you release the club, you, you throw it, and it goes down the field, and you got to tell your caddy to run after it. No, you release your accumulators. What the heck's an accumulator? Well, it's it's all the things, all the angles in the swing that you use. Your right arm bends and straightens. That's an accumulator. Your left wrist cocks and uncocks. Your, this whole left arm flying wedge rolls. Left hand. Left wrist, left hand. And then your pivot, which we were talking about today, it, the left arm swings from the pivot and the pivot moves the left arm and then the left arm gets thrown off the pivot. Well, you have to get in position so that when you're at what we call release point, the point that you start you know, undoing all these angles, you've got enough axis tilt, you're open enough, and your shoulders are on plane so that the force that's gonna come out of that release is going to work to your advantage and not, you know, make a pull or cut across the ball with an open club face or anything like that. So, what I found just now, just for myself, and I'm sure a lot of you probably learned this for the first time or worked on it before, different ways, maybe different terminology, um, you can do it better, maybe slow too. So, what that means is when I'm making a full swing, to me, what it means is when I'm making a full swing, when I add the force, I'm messing up the motion. Adding the force. So what I have to do is I have to learn to add the force without doing something funny, or I have to learn to make swings, you know, easier at, at whatever level I can, you know, I don't, you know, like Johnny Miller used to call red line. You know, things start breaking in the engine. Uh, but I, I, I really like this drill. I like I like to drill with the shaft. I also like the idea of what to do with the shoulder. Here I am. If you see the shaft drill, I said I was going to show you from this angle. There I am at the top of my swing. There's that first move right there. And what does that feel like, see? Because that's what it does, but what does it feel like? To me, from here, it feels like I'm putting my right shoulder in my right pocket. I'm putting it in my right back pocket. Some people do, right? They call it stuck behind you. I never did like that term. But that would get you stuck if your right shoulder went back here. Here's what all everybody else does. The right shoulder's going out here, you know, outside the ball or out in the field somewhere. So, you know, some people, all they need to hear is right shoulder in here instead of, they go just right out here in front of the leg instead of somewhere else. Now they know where the shoulder's supposed to go. Some people don't relate to the shoulders at all. Those people, like we told you with the hips, they might just feel like they, they start their downswing, they shift some weight back to the center by retaining some of their, uh, you know, hip turn they had right here. They feel like they're holding that turn. I squared my hips up a bunch, but I felt like I was doing a little more restricting of that hip turn. Jack Nicklaus used to feel like he just kept his shoulders turned as he changed directions. How do you know whether you're doing it? I mean, you have to buy a video camera, but you know, these things are getting cheaper. Sony's got a new line of uh, mini DVs. We're doing that on a mini DV. We got I have five cameras all the way up to $5,500 Z1U uh, HD Sony camera, uh, which I highly recommend if you <laughs> if you need those kind of things. But anyway, uh, there's some Sony cameras right now that just came out in the mini DV line. You can buy them all the way down to about $240 or $50. They have high speed frame advance with a remote control. The Canons are very good too. I have a Canon. But if you don't have a video camera, how do you know? Well, here's a telltale sign. We're talking about Jack Nicholas. People who have the right hip and right shoulder motion are downswing. Their right heel goes forward on the way to the ball. Look at any picture of Jack Nicklaus, his right heel is closer to his left foot than his right toe is. I didn't think. Every picture I've ever seen, except maybe when he got to be old and broken in. Now, most bad players 
Ryan Mantell included when he's not playing very good. That hip goes this way, the shoulder goes off plane, and the right heel goes on that way. So, you know, when I hit this little easy shot, I don't know how I did because, I, like I said, I'm not the most flexible guy in the whole world, but I bet you my right heel is in a lot better position in that slow motion swing than it is when I make some herky-jerky overly full swing because I didn't pick enough club or didn't warm up or whatever, you know, crazy idea um, uh, might have been in my swing right then because really, remember now, folks, muscles <laughs> don't have any memory. All the memory's up here, okay? All right, now the other question that Joe had was, how do you look like that logo, that, that famous Lee Trevino picture, where he looks like this, way past impact? Well, <laughs> you need to have some force on the shaft, across the shaft, drive out at you. We call that the golf machine, we call that hitting. And some people, you know, mistakenly think that you either have to be a hitter by doing that, or you have to be a swinger, somebody that's really using their pivot in the, in the left hand and just pulling like mad, you use your right hand, right arm, left hand, left arm too. Well, one day they're going to have really good machines, they're going to test all this stuff, and I guarantee you they're going to find out that almost everybody's doing a little bit of both. Now, I will say Trevino's had more right arm thrust than Jack Nicholas ever did, and I don't know how much Nicholas added, but the point I'm trying to make is you've got to have some force across the shaft. And I asked Lee Trevino himself one time, Mr. Trevino, what do you think about when you hit balls? He said, I pull as hard as I can with the last three fingers of my left hand. So he was pulling and he was pushing. And that gave him this, this really sustained, uh, uh, you know, flat left wrist through the ball that so many people like, but may not be for you. I can do it. But, uh, you know, lately I've been working on uh, allowing my left wrist to bend past the same flat left wrist I want to impact the other way and I've been having success a little more swinging probably still has a little force across the shaft even though I've been working real hard at not having it just because to me I'm not playing for a living I need to be able to experiment with these things so I do a better job of answering these questions for you now the last question Joe had was this right shoulder can it start the backswing? There's a lot of talk in golf machine circles about this right forearm takeaway, feeling like everything sort of stays still. And I did a video on that. You can search for it. My whirlwind week in Florida, part one. And uh, I'm going to work a little bit on part two today. And you might find that on there too. But basically what I'm talking about is really the difference between a correct, in my interpretation, right forearm takeaway and let's say some other kind of takeaway, like what I'm going to show you that Joe talked about, a shoulder turn takeaway where the first thing you feel like you're moving is either that right hip or that right shoulder. And they did. He said, why would you want to do that? Because I didn't do this and keep the right knee bent on. Well, some people, I mean, again, you know, I'm not the most flexible person in the world. And, you know, I'm not, I'm also not the least flexible either. Some people, if they too rigid, they keep the head too still, they never make a backswing that they can get to the inside of the ball and hit the ball correctly. So what those people need to do is they need to get this left shoulder and right hip to line up better. And they need to do it sooner. Most good players do that. They got some really good pictures of Tiger Woods in this uh, new issue of Golf Digest. You can tell because cover looks a little different on a little better matte paper. Logo's bigger. <laughs> I'm a big graphic design nut, so I, I got a kick out of it. But anyway, they do a good job. They got some really good pictures of Tiger. You don't see any of this stuff. You don't get to be the best player in the world like this, I can tell you. I mean, Fred Couples came the closest, Colin Montgomery. But, I mean, those guys have really bad backs because, you know, this, anyway, different story. But what I'm talking about is this right shoulder, right? And when you make a swing like this, that's a lot harder to do than if you're doing what Joe's asking me is okay. If you just get that right shoulder to go like Chuck Cook, who's a, also an authorized instructor golf machine and pretty famous, very highly ranked on Golf Digest's list. He says there's a wall back here. You turn your shoulder toward the wall, then you go toward the ball. It's really good, Chuck, I like that. It's hard to forget. So think about that now. If you really wanna get done what Joe's asking, you get that right shoulder behind you right away and toward the ball, I think you're fine put a little bit more oomph on that ball and if you can fix your club base you're going to start beating your buddies. Now the next question, pretty good questions here today, 
I have noticed in many good player swings that the first motion of the left shoulder in the forward swing is down and forward instead of immediately moving upward. Sergio Garcia definitely comes to mind, and I believe that Hogan did this too. Uh, Bruce. Bruce a good player. This is the kind of questions good players ask. Uh, we don't discriminate, you know, <laughs> whoever you are, you're a brand new golfer, 130 shooter, you know, tour player, you come to BrianManzella.com and come to the forum section, we'll answer your question. Okay, um, and I, I, I had a written answer on, 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 uh, on this, but I'm going to do a video answer too. Uh, a lot of golfers have what we call trigger delay or storage or some people call it lag, but just accumulated lag. Those four accumulators I told you about a little while ago, just getting them deeper into the swing. We could do a whole video on that one day. We will. How to do that, why you might want to. But, you know, every now and then you won't see a golfer. It looks like that's their first move. You know, it almost looks like that's their first move. And they're just jerking those hands in the ball. See this in a, in a swing like Sergio. If you search Mike Finney's swing, on my website, got guys who, who really have to, you know, they have maximum trigger delay and they're trying to get their hands to the ball. A lot of times early in the swing will do that. The other thing is it's usually people who have no problem hitting the inside of the ball because, I mean, the big thing about this, you know, to the wall and to the ball movement that Chuck Cook talks about, and believe me, all golf machine instructors, flat shoulder turn for the most part now an on plane shoulder on a downswing. That's considered to be just standard procedure. Um, the people who can do that, I mean, the reason you do that is so that you can get to the inside of this ball. Not just swing inside out, but just get to the inside of the ball. Look at the first episode to clarify what I mean by that. But to get to this good impact position, that's why most people have to do this and do this. But, you know, Mike Finney and Sergio Garcia, those guys, Van Hogan, they, they all had really inside out swings at some point. And so they can they can sort of stay, they can sort of stay on top of it here as they get in here and then get out of it later. Nothing wrong with that if it works for you and you don't get what, what I was saying about written answer too bunched up then. Where where you start getting you know, where you can see all this fat right here. <laughs> Good players. You look at those Tiger Woods swings. I mean, Tiger probably got nothing right there, but you I have a tough time pinching like this, but if I start getting this way, impact, you want this elongated left side. All good players look like this at impact. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about right there. <laughs> you gotta get it right. So, uh, you know, that, that, that should take care of that question. Now, next one we have right here is uh, a friend of ours, I've taught in New York area when I've done one of my tour stops. Goes by the name of Gumper. That's not his real name, you know, screen names. Uh, I've been trying to put my finger on why my downswing pivot looks so different from a good one. Uh, I have to rent one of Ben Doyle's teaching tapes. By the way, if you go to bendoylegolf.com, you can buy his very good video, How to Build a Golf Game. G-O-L-F game. That's geometrically oriented linear force from the golf machine. Or you can rent, which I think is even better, his teaching tapes. He's one of the best live teachers who ever lived. One on one, he's going to get you to do it right. And you can watch him teach people. You can tell them who you are. You know, I'm a 15 handicap slicer. I'm a big old guy. I'm inflexible. Ben probably given about a thousand of you golf lessons. He'll send you a tape of him teaching somebody like that. Next best thing to going to Quail Lodge and working with the man. Or I'm in Louisiana working with this Italian guy right here. Uh, it says that it seems to me that, that uh, my pivot is more of a lateral slide or sway into a soft left leg where Ben, Brian, Michael Jacobs up in Long Island, one of the golf machine teachers, great friend of mine, seem to have more of a vertical snap into a firm left leg. Does this make any sense? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Something else I was working on today. Because I do it, I'd read these, <laughs> I read these ahead of time. Um, okay. This impact position that we're talking about. Where are these good players at? Here they are, right? They're, they've had this hip slide, the right shoulder's on plane, the hips are a little open, the shoulders are a little open. By the way, the hips and the shoulders are open at impact. All this stuff, the flat left wrist, that right wrist. Okay. But what happened is they actually got to the, their body got to this position 
just a hair before impact. Like here. So if you get to watch this like swing vision, you may see from all the way from right here to right here, hardly any motion in the body. Because the way the swing works is kind of like a whip, whiplash effect. Everything's getting pulled and then stop to a certain extent and the next component and the next component. So, you know, with Gumper, you're realizing is that he sort of just like this through the ball and, you know, a good player seemed to be on this left leg and sort of snapping it back. But really what happens is there's a, you're trying to get your hip into position and your, uh, I mean, not only uh, forward position, but also open to a certain extent where your shoulder's in a position where if you do all this, like right now, if I keep my right shoulder right here, I can't turn my hip a lick. I mean, I'll effectively stop them. And as long as I can keep that right shoulder down and back, that hip is stopped enough to let this club go by. If, if, if I, uh, you know, I'm gonna do it with a towel because I just don't feel like throwing a club off in the range here, but if I threw this towel like a golf club as hard as I could, what you'll see if you play that back slow is everything got pulled to a spot and then everything got released. That's how the golf swing works. So why why isn't Gumper doing that? Well, you know, he's had a club face problem for a long time, so this is what he associates with impact. Well, how do you work on that? Well, to me, there's a couple things that, that, that you can do. Obviously, hitting little chips and pitches out of a more normal stance than a chip or a pitch stance. Just little shots, feeling what it feels like. Even start there and then just make a little motion with your arms. Homer Kelly talked about that in the golf machine basic motion. You know, if you can't, you know, get your body, maybe he talks about doing a dress, but I like it better. Get your body at impact and then just do your arms. At least you get to see what keeping a flat left wrist and a bent right wrist through the ball feels like with the hands and arms while your body's in this position. And then you, what you're doing in your swing is, basically, is you're trying to pull all of that down to the ball, toward the ball, and when you settle into this position when you get the release point here, and then you fire those accumulators with a trigger, everybody's trigger's a little bit different, and then that pulls you to the finish. But you gotta know what it feels like enough. Now he's done it, because I've given him lessons, I've made him do it. But when you're practicing, you gotta, and see, because there's no muscle memory, there's only memory up here, you gotta be able to feel what it feels like, so you have to, rig some kind of way to recreate the position that you're trying to learn the feel of and then do it a bunch of times until you can mechanics produce this is from the golf machine mechanics produce but feel reproduces if gumper gets over there and you're having trouble with that at home work on hitting shots from that position and then coming out of it and then maybe pivoting into it and hitting with it like this and coming out of it. And you'll, you'll learn to have what the old timers, the Gene Sarazens and all talked about, a firm left side. I guarantee you, it's not soft. Gumper also has one more question. He says, I'm having some difficulty lately retaining the twist away from the top into impact. Uh, the movie screen idea, that's a drill I have or an idea I have past the ball, isn't working right now. Usually you have 10 ways of explaining the same idea. Can you uh, lay a few alternate images or swing thoughts on me and all of you right here uh, on the website and also on YouTube? Yes, okay, first of all, what is the twist away? Uh, again, never slice again, uh, the video. Come to my website, brianmanzel.com. It's only $29.95 if you just want the web version, $19.95. I guarantee you, I mean, I absolutely guarantee you I'll send you money back if you don't like it. It is a wonderful video in this respect it's never been done before <laughs> people have been slicing for 600 years the club base is open finally a video said okay look here's let's fix it we can fix the slice forever with this video but we'll talk about the video some other time but anyway what is the twist away well most people have a top of the batsman position where the toe hangs down and the left wrist is really bent and so i like a flat left wrist like tiger woods not this position right here but this position and one day I was giving a lesson to a gentleman. He was in this position halfway back. Club face looking at him. I said, here's where I want you. I grabbed him and I moved him to this orthodox position. And he went, so what you want me to do is twist away. I said, yeah, thank you so much. 
I'll be using that for the next hundred years. That's what it feels like for some people. All the right, the, the correct hand motion is on the backswing is you just bending your right wrist straight back and, and, and flattening your left wrist. And if you start here, it's what we call standard address. That's it. But some people have done this other stuff so long that just bending the right wrist straight back and not forcing it wide open feels like they're twisting it this way. Just feel like your right palm is always facing away from you. Now, I like to tell people, you're not only doing that on a backswing, you're trying to keep that. I mean, there's no sense in, you don't hit the ball on your backswing, much as the backswing is important. But anyway, what's a couple ideas for people who may have bought Never Slice again, working on all the things, and they need something to maintain this flat left wrist and this non-wide open club face toward the ball from the top of the swing. Well, first of all, again, if you do something nice and slow, looking at it the whole time, the golf machine would call it, look, 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 look at it. If you want that club face to look away from you all the time, practice doing that to, let's say, release point, get your hips there, you kill these two things at once, and then say, okay, now I'm going to hit my shot. Now I'm going to swivel, now I'm going to finish. I mean, I don't see people practice like that. One of the questions is, how do I practice? Don't just stand out there and just keep beating balls. You'll memorize the bad shots. Take some time and work through those positions. But here's a good one for you, lady. Do the twist with your right hand off the club and hold that into the swing. And then you say, well, shoot, if I was doing it with my right hand like this, why can't I do it with my right hand on the club? That's one image that'll work for you. The other one is that imagine there's a wall behind you. This is a new one. This didn't even make it in the video. I have to go on the next version. But um, imagine there's a wall behind you right here, and you're going to try to hit the wall on plane. So you're the wall right here. Imagine there's a wall behind you. You're going to try to put the club on the wall on a downswing with whatever face configuration you want. Now, a good player would want that club sort of laying on the plane. So he needs to feel like he puts the club on the wall with the face like that. Somebody that's having uh, a, a twist away issue needs that club face more closed. They need to feel like when they get, see you get to the top of the swing, the wall's here, right? So now you, the club moves back toward vertical. It gets like on a wall back there. I, I have a movie screen idea right here. People can, you know, simple things like, you know, vertical walls, you can think about those things. But anyway, you know, you, you also want the club to be on plane, right? So the, there's the angle you want the club on. Put that club on that wall with the face pointing to the wall if you're working on your twist away. If you're working on an orthodox Tiger Woods position right here, hit the heel of that club if the club is maybe too close for you if you're working on having a club less closed, like some of my good players have to do. And uh, again, it's just finding a way to really have first the knowledge and then the understanding to do it slow, right? To be able to pose it, or at least, I'll tell you what, Go find a friend of yours, Gumper, or anybody else, his name's Richard. Richard, you go out there, find a friend of yours that does the same thing, and you teach it to them. You've heard it from me, you've heard it from Mike Jacobs, and you've seen the video. When you teach it to somebody, I've learned so much about golf, teach people like you all over the world. I've learned stuff for myself. When you explain to you, you can explain something to somebody else, I don't know if you know. That's why, you know, you can't go by tour players. I mean, you know, best players in the world and supremely talented. But, I mean, you know, they just need to know how to push the button for them. They, they, they haven't spent, you know, 25 years or Ben Doyle 40-something years teaching regular people. That's what I feel like I'm good at. I want to be the best teacher in the world. I'm a long way from it. A lot of you can help me. If you have any questions about anything, you come to BrianManzella.com. You go to the Manzella Answer Department. You'll get an answer from me. This is Brian Manzella. I'll see you in the next episode of the Brian Manzella Show right here on YouTube and brianmanzella.com.